This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, every other week's edition with DeSoto Brown and Martin Despang. And we're broadcasting live from our lava rock island of Oahu yes, in Hawaii. Are. And here our volcano is not active anymore, but today is the perfect weather for uh, this show because today we got the Kona winds. Yes, that we means do. they come over from the that's big island where the volcano is still active. That's right. And what it blows over is what we call VOG. And what is that, DeSoto? VOG is a combination of uh, aerosols put out by the volcano that turn into smog-like mm -hmm. air pollution, but it's entirely natural. It's supposed to be man-made. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we're one of the places in the world that's blessed or unblessed with VOG. Exactly. Yes. So I'll bring the first picture. La two weeks yeah. ago, we did the volume one of this show here, which was about um, volumetric volcanic building methodologies yes. yes and as it's often with us you know once we did the show we stumble over something that we said damn it we wish we would have it's done that right so this is one me stumbling out of my school of architecture building up university avenue there's this awesome church mid-century church across and it has these amazing stunning look at how the glass in, is inserted yes. there framelessly and how they basically push the, the basalt to this sort of sharp edge. Right. So this is a late entry to what we were talking about because this is pretty much a monolithic stereotomic wall. Right. But today we want to talk about, and you said probably around the 30s where industrialization yeah. kicked in and yeah. it was too expensive to yes. do it. And so one started to basically more clad slash exactly. veneer buildings. Exactly, exactly. So we see a shift from buildings which were made of rock mm -hmm. to buildings which were made of concrete but had a rock veneer. So we're mm -hmm. talking about volcanic veneers mm -hmm. this show. And if we go to our next picture, we'll see an example of what we're talking about. This is the oh, Kahali Hotel, no, okay. beautiful mid-century building, opened in 1963-64. And in the background, you see that lava rock wall, but of course, it's an entirely concrete building. And in front of it, we see the pillar as well as the curve of the staircase where that plain concrete is visible in contrast to the veneer on the back wall. Awesome. And I, I love this sort of submerged feeling. It's yeah. like you're sitting in the crater. Yes, isn't you it? Are. that's right. I mean, this, that's is, right. this is cool. Yes. So the next one, we're doing a little bit. You show, you emptied your archive, and I walked around and looked what's still left from that. And this is just around my corner uh, in the hood. This is the uh, plinth of the Waikiki Circle Tower. And I find this amazing, uh, took this picture from going inside. You don't see any car anymore. It seems like you're in paradise yeah. that we envision. Right. Although this is Kalakaua Avenue, and there's the heaviest traffic, as you can tell, very uh, yes. personally from a recent <laughs> yes. experience that we save for later. Yes. And the next picture is the thing in detail. Uh, where this is almost like an inhabited at green wall, right? Yep. So the, the mortar, you know, is so open and probably, you know, came out over the years or maybe intentionally. So it's a sort of rock wall. I'm always thinking about resilience when yes. seawater level rise, which we yes. have a lot. They yes. must have sensed that because this is almost like a barrier. Let the waters, you know, come against and they basically, uh, you can't, really? you can't literally, there's a window down yeah, there as you yeah, can see, but yeah. sort of, that's sort of the gesture. It sort of feels like that. And it's definitely a, a cool example. And it's but very interesting that the ferns probably, they must water that wall you know, to get the ferns to grow it's, there it's, because otherwise they wouldn't be there. But that's a very interesting contrast okay. of greenery getting in there. So give me another one of the favorites that you always have in our love so Well, one of the in our next picture, uh, one of this is a picture from mm. the Kauai, Kauai Surf Hotel, which opened in 1961. And this, again, is very much a contrast of the concrete, plain concrete floor, the lava rock veneer on the left, and totally open in the dining area with the Kiabi trees right there, looking very raw and rugged and very uh, uncivilized. And yet you've got this civilized, very, yeah. very wire Eames chairs oh, that yeah. people are sitting on. Again, an interesting contrast, very popular at that time. And they're actually Harry Betoya was this guy that, that's the wire the, chair. That's yeah. those, yeah. And I mean, this is why didn't Hawaii stay like that? But yeah, that's another oh, well. thing. So yeah. next picture is today. 
uh, and at least... Uh, um, no, that's a lot. There we go. So there we go. This is on Cujillo and Seaside. Once again, we got that plinth, and then you got that gastronomy up there, and you always said you like that contrast yeah. between the rugged and the local and the... You know, carved out of the quarry, and then sort of the high tech could have uh, exactly. made concrete, which you can see right. in, in contrast playing off pretty well. Right. Give it some green, give it some light, give it some people, and you got a really pleasant That's local right. mix. Right? That's right. That's right. So another one um, is the next one, which is I, I believe it's unfortunately next picture please is endangered. This is the former Genki Sushi uh, on our on our favorite Kalakaua Street. No, Kapahulu. Uh, Kapahulu. Thank you. Yes. And it's been um, empty for a while. This is a very fine modern. Reminds me like of Italian modernism, like a Terrani or something like. It. It's a really nice composition, and I hope someone moves in there and and sees the the beauty of it. And the beginning of the end are basically flanked by these by these rock walls, and the ones towards Diamond Head, which is the middle one, I think perfectly portrays yes. this sort of being offset from its actually structural Correct. wall behind. So it's not right. trying to make up. Yes, it, it is actually celebrating its veneerness. Correct. Right, pretty, right. Pretty great. This was originally a, a savings and loan. Oh, okay. When it was constructed in the early sixties. Okay. 60s. All right. So we we have been talking about sort of the culinary typology. We're sort of segueing out and showing a shopping. Uh, right. That's so our next picture. There's the Moanalua Shopping Center, which mm. was opened in about 1955. And again, that looks like it's a monolithic stone wall. You think that that could be structural, and that the rocks are actually holding everything up. Mm -hmm. They are not. That is just a, con a concrete wall that has been adorned with the rocks. Mm -hmm. But that, again, one of the reasons that we don't see this as much is because of the amount of hand work that is required. And even though this is not a stone wall per se, mm -hmm. somebody had to sit there and glue and attach all yeah. those rocks. Yeah. So that's a lot of hand work. Yeah. And again, you have the contrast of the Moana Lewis mm -hmm. Shopping Center sign mm -hmm. on the back, mm -hmm. which is, was a neon sign, yeah. on the back of this rough texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and sort of like if there's any sort of recipe or secret how to do this successfully and impressively, it seems like applying the rock, the more the better, and, and not sort of yep. mixed and mit exactly. with other things. And that reminds me of that picture that you provided for our Tropical Brutalism show, how the ancient yes. Hawaiians yes. have done correct, that. Correct, correct. Right? And, and the, uh, if you look at the really large remaining heiau structures, which heiau, of course, are religious structures in traditional Hawaii, they were built with large, almost retaining walls mm -hmm. or foundation walls that looked like this, mm -hmm. that were dry stacked. They didn't use any mortar, obviously no cement, yeah. but again, a huge monolithic, impressive physical structure to show mm -hmm. the power of mm -hmm. their religious their mm -hmm. religious organization, if you will. And this gem is unfortunately not existing anymore Correct. in that case, right? And Correct. so is unfortunately the next picture in the next project one, which is former Liberty House, then Macy's in Kailua, and now not anymore. And at the top right, you see how it will look soon. It's a sort of pleasant mix of decorated and ornamented, as you like to say, with some wood, with some white, with some whatever. Very generic, could be in yeah. California or somewhere exactly. else. Yeah. But at the bottom, and I'm afraid that's going to go away too, is which I um, sort of um, investigated in as a, as a close-up here, uh, and uh, you can see on the left, there was this bus stop, this bench. Yeah. It was, it was a fantastic sort of, you're sitting in, in your land, so to right. speak, right? Correct. I mean, and very... you know what else, too? The Liberty House, uh, the facade was a metal grating, yeah. which we talked about yeah. in one of our yeah. previous shows. Yeah, yeah. It was a very exotic building, whereas the new one, we allow ourselves to say, is will be very invasive, but we let ourselves be surprised. We don't prejudge. That's better. We're sort of going into the another next typology, next picture, which is, um, well, this one before here, uh, this is sort of segueing into, this is about the car. This is Mark's Garage in downtown, and this is um, uh, a fellow uh, uh, founding board member, Don Hibbert, uh, also been on the show a couple times, who uh, introduced us here on an XP day with the emerging generation, that this is actually his favorite uh, mm. uh, lava rock, and, oh, and, okay. and and you pointed this out last time. Lava isn't just lava. There is a there is a, a total diversity, Absolutely. and this is a very spongy, porous one. Yes. That shame on me. I took the picture and, and and blew it up too much, so it doesn't really get 
If you guys got to go there, and this is the notion of the of the of the show, anyways. Right. We want to go, and, go out and look out. for the things that we're talking and, about. And so we're segueing into residential, uh, low-rise residential. But the next one is sort of more like almost like a motel, right? Right. Yeah. This is. There were several of these ebb tide hotels, and one of the structures is still in existence today. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. Again, the contrast of the plain concrete and the rough textured lava rock wall and the basalt ruggedness that is hearkening to Hawaii's rugged mm -hmm. primitive past. And yet today, and this picture was taken in 1960, we have all of the amenities that you, the tourist, wants in yeah, a comfortable yeah. place to stay. And what you just so perfectly said, the rugged, you know, mm -hmm. nature is the next project, which is uh, up the Gold Coast. Um, yeah. A res mostly residential tower. And here, once again, so heroically celebrated, you know, make this multi story, make it bold, mm -hmm. uh, make it. I find this, this is one of the amazing, most amazing entrances I've seen on the island because it's like that little mouse hole there. Yeah. So it's totally understated. Yeah. Versus the Victorian way where it's right. like showing off. Yeah. You know, and, Here's and here where I, I am. In. There's no but, question. But then there's a sort of you know, disappointment once you go through. Whereas here, it's like this nondescript, where is the entrance? And then the tree next to it, and then this iconic, you know, copper right. single letter signage. Right. This is the stuff that really was was making people coming here. Right. And they did not find this anywhere That's else. That's exactly right. Right. And I really like the contrast of that variegated how. Mm -hmm. uh, bush that's been trimmed yeah. so that again it's the contrast of the colors the shape the textures against the lava rock absolutely and this is a natural way to do it as opposed to the unnatural mm -hmm. or man-made way of including metal or yeah. concrete or mm -hmm. terrazzo or other elements which are yeah. artificial and as you promised there were a couple more eptides so you got a multi-story yeah. eptide that's oh now. we got our next, next eptide? picture okay our next picture yeah there's the all one eptide that building is still there, albeit very changed mm -hmm. and altered and looking very shabby. Mm -hmm. But again, we have, I think very interestingly, those vertical fins in the center part of where the entrance is to emphasize the entrance canopy. Mm -hmm. And then again, the, uh, the lanai railings on the side, which have the corrugated metal, mm -hmm. the plain, smooth, white stucco concrete roof yeah. that's placed on top of it. Um, again, similar and this types is a, of things. This is accumulation of, of elements of previous show. <laughs> Crazy cantilevering canopies. Yeah. Slatted. Yep. Fins, Hawaii fins, fins. And then today's show. Yeah. And next picture is another example. And once again, you guys go out. There's more and more. But this is again on, on Kapahulu at the beginning of it towards um, the mountains. And uh, I always like this. Once yep. again, there's this heroic lava pretty much the same theme you know they did it was almost like the standard it was very a good, standardized a, a at good that time. standard a good yeah, standard to have i agree and you have another one from these glory days well let's next see picture. what do we have next we've got the victoria apartments this is in waikiki that's a 1959 chevrolet in the foreground so we know it's at least mm -hmm. in 1959 and very much the same things that we've been seeing the contrast of the different types of materials against that lava rock although what we're seeing there is a smoother surface. Mm -hmm. We're going to see more of lava being used more as op obvious veneer mm -hmm. where it's been sliced and made slim mm -hmm. to adhere to a wall rather than being in its rounded original state. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just stepping out of this typology, but sort of related, because in the back in the days, back in the good days, they had the schools close to where yep. one lived. And next right. picture is a school. Right. They, oh, is this a church? Sorry, as one. No, it's a school. It oh, is, it's a, it is oh, a religious it's school. This is Star of the Sea School. You're <laughs> okay, correct, and that's okay, why the yeah. girls are in the yeah, foreground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, um, very much like what we've been seeing, just the, the contrasting elements, the the rounded rock features mm -hmm. against a very rectangular structure yep. and a very rectangular mm -hmm. wall. Mm -hmm. But the cross on the wall, again, very strong contrast to make it stand out. Yep. The plain, smooth white cross mm -hmm. on the rugged, mm -hmm. dark background of mm -hmm. the basalt. And you got one more, one exotic tropical And example. here's the uh, Tropic Surf. This is located on Kuhio Avenue in Waikiki. Very much the same situation. And, and again, during that time, as you just said, this was a very standardized mm -hmm, type of construction mm -hmm. for small buildings, yeah. commercial buildings here in Honolulu. In but particular. as that one shows, there were nice variations to that theme, right? Yeah. So here, basically, the slabs are continued. Yes. So it's like an infill yep. from floor to floor. Right. And that way, sort of less archaic, right. rustic. Right. 
and, and an acknowledgement of the presence of that concrete floor. Yeah, exactly. Which is a different color. Mm -hmm. And the next picture is uh, sort of a, a potpourri of things in my front yard uh, from the top uh, park shore. And then the bottom is next to it. And I just happened to, I mean, this is not a historic picture in the middle, but that 1950s SL just drove by. So I thought, <laughs> so what a we, perfect there we go. back in time. And the one in the bottom is that ABC store. And once again, you can see the rugged Park Shore one, uh, the more chunky one, and then you can see yes. that more. This is a better picture of the same stone that Don likes so much. Right. And then the, the middle part at the very right, we go to the next picture because this is my building where I'm currently struggling and fighting to stay because it seems like I might get kicked out. So you guys cross Find your fingers. Find a place to live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So here's the show I did with my neighbor, Tom Miller, down there. And, and we refer to that because now we're going to talk about how cool is maybe uh, volcanic veneer these days. Yeah. The Monocle uh, City Guide series, who are headquartered in London, as we pointed out in that show, think it's very cool because one of their images in their little promotional video, is they the feature thing. that signage. Right. So once again, it's it's that we see the same sort of theme and standard of the single letter, mostly in copper yes. and green and, yes. and patinated, yes. applied to the sort of the font and the, the sort of the picture of, of lava rock. Right. And uh, the next picture is, um, is another building featured in that same trailer. And the, the trailer is, I'm, I'm sorry, is, is, this is this is basically a, a publisher a world-renowned publisher yeah. branding our, yeah. our city. Yes. And sorry, current developers, it's not showing any of your modern buildings. Right. It's showing these. But it's showing the stuff from the good old days because right. it must be obviously still hot. Exactly. As lava and it, was. And, and it's also something that you're not going to see done again in exactly the same way. So exactly. everything that we have of this type, every example like this, needs to be acknowledged as mm -hmm. something we're never going to duplicate. And, and preserve. And preserve I mean, is... for that reason. And mm -hmm. this is on Olawai Boulevard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think this must be another ver uh, uh, version of, or example of Don's favorite. Yeah. Uh, very porous, very sort porous, of ri very... rice cracker-like. It's almost. very uh, sponge-like. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to look now at the few examples we found where, um, you know, uh, architects and, and clients are, are doing this again, and this is almost like a deja vu, once again, of a couple of shows we did in the past. These are some shopping malls. And this is the international marketplace, how it looks now. And we sort of very critically looked at how it looked in the past, which there's a picture at the top right, where the materials, as you pointed out, were pretty much from here. Yeah. The, the climate control devices were yeah. off you know, using our trade winds. Correct. And now we basically pretty much got an invasive uh, Western corporate yes. shopping mall yes. uh, that has none of that anymore. But now some of the retailers come in, like this one here, and basically veneer yes. their storefronts. Yes. So um, as you can see, there's a whole bunch there. And there are these two pillars. And there's actually behind that wooden awning is also a horizontal piece of it. And, you know, the detail I took at the very top in the middle, if you go there, it's kind of weird. It almost, I mean, I've never seen that lava. It almost, I'm wondering, you had that question before about mm -hmm. when we introduced the last show. Yes. And it was like, is this real Correct. or is this fake? Correct. I mean, it almost looks like too lava to me. Yeah. And it almost actually, looks like it still flows. And that doesn't really. You, you can't tell in situations like that, if that's something that's molded from actual rock. Yeah. yeah. You can't tell, I think, probably until you go up and hit it with your finger yeah, yeah. to tell if yeah, that's yeah. actual stone or if it's well, some and, kind and of Well, and if you composite. go to Koalina, it's mostly fiberglass, oh. but it looks more authentic than the, the real stuff. The real stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so in one criticism we made, and actually after the fact, one, another example, <laughs> after the fact, you, I think, saw a sign that says, uh, don't go to the center before 10 in the morning or something like that. And it also doesn't allow street vendors. Yeah. Oh, or yeah. even musicians to be yeah. on the public street in Correct. front of the thing. Yeah. So it, the public r space got hijacked yes. by capitalism. Yes, it did. And, and also, that's not the only place that that's happened, no, particularly in Waikiki. Exactly. And so it also pushed out the little people, the little vendors. Right. right. And they pushed them next picture into at least they found another refuge, and that's Duke's Lane. Mm -hmm. 
But then there is this uh, trade center, Waikiki Trade Center, yeah. that also got redeveloped. Yeah. And it's fronting also Duke's Lane. And so now that gentrification with this pretty hideous uh, classicist, yes. uh, this is Vegas and Caesar's Palace yeah. or something veneer yeah. in front of that, you know, interesting 70s stuff. So it's a, it, it gets more and more weird. And then this stuff spills into Duke, Duke's Lane. I think it's legitimate to be afraid that it's going to just continue. Oh, it it's going to be I contagious, it and it's going to gentrify. And then you have yeah. none of these little vendors and, and left And this anymore. particular area of Kuhio Avenue has been gentrified a great deal. It's in the process of being upgraded considerably yeah. right yeah, at the yeah, moment, yeah. right as we speak. And this Duke's Lane, excuse me, <clears throat> Excuse me, this Duke's Lane eatery, which is essentially a mm -hmm. food court, mm -hmm. is evidence of that. Not necessarily a bad thing, because no. I've gone there and I've enjoyed it. Yeah. You pointed out, ironically, that there is a restaurant called Basalt. Which and we show there. you can yeah. see in the, the photograph. And there's no basalt. No, involved. there's nothing. Not no. not even the attempt of a veneer, which right. is our topic. But right. the next picture next door it is. They put a hotel into the, into the Trade Center and right. the Hyatt Centric. And then there is a sort of lobby wall, which is pretty much, you can imagine this is cut thin tile like, yeah. you know, and it's pretty much like, um, if it's at all natural, but let's give it that. Right. And, uh, but as you, as you said too, this is applied like tile. Yeah, you, yeah. you slice it, the back is mm -hmm. smooth, and then mm -hmm. you just glue it up on the yeah. wall. So there's really not a lot of hand crafting involved yeah, yeah. as there was in some of the earlier but, examples. But you saw. saw an example which I blindly walked by, yeah. although I've been there the day before and yeah. not knowing of each other, where they tried to reintroduce the real, right. and that's the right. next picture. Right, and this is at All in Water Center. This is the Hawaiian Islands Creation Store. And when this was installed in the 1990s, I was very aware that they were hearkening back to the use of the raw, rough, basalt rock again. So it caught my attention when they did it, because it had gone out of fa it had gone out of favor, mm -hmm. gone out of style. Mm -hmm. You pointed out the very interesting stairway and sort of balcony yeah. that, that we see in the picture on the right. Yeah. That is a continuation inside the store. And of assuming that, that that's mark. real rock, that's pretty heavy. That's pretty scary, yeah. almost. Yeah. But more scary is the next picture, which is one mall left. That's our biggest mall, Alamoana after its extension, and then there's a signage thing, and they put this sort of, I mean, this is the thinnest veneer ever, and it's beaten up and it's cracked. So our, our message is like, guys, okay, if you do, if mm -hmm. you do, you know, a lava rock again, which is great, do it more seriously right. and don't do it so decoratively. Obviously right, and decoratively. In, the in the photograph in the upper right corner, you can see that that actually yeah. is cracked. The exactly. adhesive is broken apart exactly. and has separated, and there's a big crack. So that's sort of like an offense to local, you know, local everything. And it clearly you know. is not structural. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> so the next picture is is the last mall that we did a show about, which is the uh, in, uh, which is the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center, as we refer to it at the top. And so that one has originally been, and this is what also our permanent background refers to, um, um, has originally been what we call the Volcrete, the local yeah. concrete. So it right. had tried to be what Frank Lloyd Wright called concrete liquid stone. Exactly. So it mm -hmm. tried to be sort of a, a man-made port, right. lava rock, if you exactly. want. Exactly, so. with aggregate, with exactly. texture, with separate exactly. units in it. And, and in also it. keeping Kalakaua, Kalakaua, which was a palm grove. Unfortunately, right. that didn't fly well over the years, and they started to cheesecake the front. They did. And then one tenant who's very corporate, probably the most corporate, which is Apple, who's usually doing a, sta a, a glass store, they were saying, well, this location is different. We got to do something uh, specific about it. And they basically used basalt as basically um, plates or, or, um, cladding. or, or cladding and in big sheets. And um, it's a pretty uh, interesting, um, yeah, I, I heard a rumor and I have never anyone confirm it that they had to ship this to Cupertino where some high guys looked at it and sorted some out and just shipped it back. Yeah. Of course, then you sort of offset the, <laughs> at least the carbon footprint part exactly. of local, so we right. shouldn't do that. Right, right. And, but, you know, it's, it's good craft. It's, it's certainly the best, you know, uh, cheesecaking of the former Volcrete. And it's approach. an interesting variation on a, a, a yeah. major corporation allowing a different, unique facade that that is not identical to all of the other exactly. ones that they've used elsewhere exactly. in the world. Exactly. And sand, if you look at the detail, sandblasting in that apple there, you know, this lit thing is pretty is yeah. pretty interesting. Correct. Well, let's go to something else that now now we'll leave. We'll go to our next picture, and we're going to leave the Hawaiian Islands, and we're going to go to Germany, which is the homeland of my friend Martin here. 
And this, first of all, on the left, what is that on the left? That's a well, funny looking thing. Well, this is the Merzbau, who many in the art scene consider to be our import, most important son of Hanover, Germany, is Kurt Schwitters. And he was a Dada artist, right. and Dada was weird for most yeah, people. Crazy and this people. Is, this is a crazy installation. That's that a crazy in, Dada in, original in, piece. In one museum. Right, yeah. and on the right, there was a commission that uh, Martin worked on with his father, I believe, yep. for to honor this guy, Schwitters, who is a, Schwitters? That's right, Schwitters, who was this Dada artist. And if we go to the next picture, this was a series of light rail stations, and the stations all started out with this basic steel framework, as you see here, and then each one of the stations along this line got a different exterior attached to it that had some connection to where that particular location was. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, if we go to the next one, we will see that uh, the idea was to use river rock that was indigenous to that particular location because it had been a rural location that was being urbanized. And the attempt to use that rock was unfortunately economically impossible. Exactly. So they had to do a mold of the mm -hmm. real rocks and installed the mold on the steel skeleton to create the bus shelter or the, the train shelter that you see on the right. That different one, yeah. That, right. And, and so the next one we see how the basalt one then came about. Right, and so then, again, we're gonna hearken to where this is where the basalt came from. And so this particular station on that steel framework, you had these basalt panels installed, but those smaller, what looked like just gray dotted, uh, the, the, the gray rectangles that are dotted around in there actually have a, an artistic purpose. And if we go to the next picture, this again is uh, paying homage to Schwitters, Schwitters, and as a crazy Dada person, he wrote what he said was a poem in 1922, which is actually just the alphabet backwards, <laughs> starting with Z. Yeah. And so to honor the poem, those individual panels contain each one of the letters, in the backwards order, and at night, when it gets dark, you don't see the basalt very much, but the interior of those panels is lit so that you can now see the sandblasted letter that mm -hmm. is visible, and as Martin says, if we go to the next picture, it kind of looks like fireflies. Um, I've never personally seen fireflies, so I can't say that that <laughs> looks like that, but there are the letters, which you can kind of see, which light up and pay homage to Schwitters, the original crazy Dada poet. Mm -hmm. And in the next picture, one of the things that Martin and I discussed was, here's a then and now picture. So I think on the right is the picture when it was first installed, yes. and on the left is the way it looks today, almost 20 years later. And uh, there's very little graffiti on it. There's one heart that I can see up there in the right-hand corner, but basically it remains in pretty much its original condition and looking really good, and I'm, I'm proud that they don't wreck things up there. Mm -hmm. Right, and yeah, in our let's just let's just jump ahead and let's do the next picture. And, and this is the town to the left is the town where the material came from in Mending, a volcanic area, which the picture on the top right refers to. And it's amazing to see an entire city made out of their material, their stuff. Right, and we're saying we are still a rock island. We're still a volcanic yes. rock, and what we all see is shiny metal, is yeah. stucco, is cheesecake, all right. these things. Why we don't, don't see our indigenous material? And we made a suggestion how, on a larger scale, one could do that. Revisit the last show. This is the picture at the bottom right. Uh, yeah, the right. Canary Islands, the way exactly. they did that there. And then go to the second, the last picture here which is a picture uh, which, There's Martin. which Suzanne took of me when she was here and we were sitting in Halle Eva and watching the sunset. And when it gets colder, like relatively yes. now in the winter, it yes. still warms you because it retains heat. Correct. While midday when the sun is blasting it, if it would be granite, you couldn't see it on right. it, it would burn your bud. Right. But it doesn't do with basalt. So this means there is some R value, there is some right. insulation because right. it's aerated by nature. Correct. Right? And so, the idea is, let's go to the next picture, aerate the rock the way the natural basalt is, containing microscopic small air pockets. Mm -hmm. And those air pockets insulated, they don't make it overly hot, but they also can give off heat later on. Yeah. And that in the background shows that process being used for concrete yeah, today. Yeah. So we don't have any specific suggestions here like in the other shows, but we just want to deliver to the audience yeah. and the professional community and the emerging ones Think about an evolution, yes. a reintroduction of yes. using lava rock in a substantial way. Correct. That's what our last two shows have been about. Lava exactly. rock, basalt, and 
the ways it has been used, the ways it can exactly. be used, if you think about it. Exactly. And the next show will be, I will take advantage that I'm back in Germany. That's and correct. And so we will find a topic that sort of takes advantage of me being even more distant, getting a sort of a, a very multicultural uh, view again. And until then, stay warm. Yep. And lava, lava crazy. Lava on. <laughs>